Rabbits, Rabbits Everywhere, A Fibonacci Tale by Anne McCollum, illustrated by Gideon Kendall. A long time ago in a town far away, rats danced in the streets and seemed destined to stay. They fought with the cats and ate all the cheese the people cried out, come help us, please. A Pied Piper came and played a smart song. The rats followed him and were gone before long. Hooray for the Piper, the rats equal zero. Hooray for the Piper, he must be a hero. The town of Chi was famous for two things. Chi was where the Pied Piper lived and she had rich green gardens. Lettuces grew bigger than a king's head. Children played marbles with the enormous peas. The people believed that the wizard on the hill was responsible for this good fortune. Every week, the Pied Piper led a group carrying food up to the wizard. Up the hill, they trudged to the wizard's house. One day, the Pied Piper grumbled, why should we always feed that wizard? Let him grow his own food. But sir, said a girl named Amanda, they say the wizard helps our gardens grow. Quiet little girl, the Piper ordered. I'm in charge and I say the wizard doesn't deserve our food. The Piper hid the carrots and the cabbages in his own pantry. Then he told the wizard that there was no extra food. From his mountaintop, the wizard could see the gardens of Chi. He knew the piper was lying. That night, the wizard was hungry. Looking down at the little town, he rumbled, they will pay for their fib. A great whooshing wind swept through the town, shaking the houses. Everyone slept on, except for Amanda. She looked out the window at the wizard's house. Lightning flickered in the sky, and she could hear a voice like distant thunder. What is the wizard doing? She wondered, shivering. On Monday morning, Amanda went outside to her garden. Suddenly, she felt like she was being watched. Hello, she called out. Is anyone there? Two furry faces peeked out from behind the leaves. Rabbits? I've never had rabbits here before, Amanda said. Oh, and you're just babies. The pair of little rabbits followed her from row to row as she weeded the cabbage patch. When she was done, she fed them each cabbage leaf. On Tuesday, Amanda went to the garden again. It wasn't long before the pair of rabbits came hopping up to her. My goodness, you two have grown since yesterday, she said. What's that shiny thing under your chin? A tag on the collar around the black rabbit's neck said, not. The white rabbit had a collar too. Its tag read, fib. Not and fib. <laughs> Funny names, Amanda laughed. On Wednesday morning, not and fib were not alone. A new pair of baby rabbits poked their heads out from behind the leaves. The baby rabbits looked just like their parents, except one was spotted and one was brown. Not and fib, Amanda exclaimed. You were so tiny only two days ago, and now you have a pair of babies of your own. 
She scratched the rabbits under their chins and said, I hope you'll all keep me company today. And they did just that, munching on two radish tops she gave them. Early on Thursday morning, Amanda gasped when she found Knot and Fib in the pea patch. Baby Knot and Baby Fib were with them, but they weren't little anymore. They were full grown, as big as their parents. Not only that, but Knot and Fib had a new pair of baby rabbits with them. Three pairs of rabbits scampered down the row eating her pea plants. On Friday, Amanda saw five pairs of rabbits eating five rows of spinach. On Saturday, there were eight pairs eating eight onions. On Sunday, 13 pairs snuggled together eating 13 carrots. After that, there were so many pairs it was hard for Amanda to keep track. Rabbits, or Amanda wasn't the only one with rabbits. Rabbits were everywhere, and their numbers kept increasing every day. Soon, it was impossible to walk anywhere without tripping over a pair of the furry creatures. To make matters worse, the mayor of Chi was allergic to rabbit fur. He couldn't stop sneezing. The mayor called a town meeting. He blew his nose and said, People of Chi, we have a rabbit invasion. He paused to sniffle. We must get rid of these ridiculous rodents. If not, they will eat all our food. Why don't we eat rabbit stew, called out the innkeeper. He licked his lips. The baker's wife shouted. Eat them? Look at them! They're not regular rabbits. It's not safe to eat enchanted animals. Amanda called out, Why don't we ask the wizard for help? Bah, said the Pied Piper. That old hermit is nothing but trouble. He's the one who caused rats to overrun the town of Hamlin. I had to save Hamlin by leading the rats out of town. Maybe you could get rid of the rabbits, suggested the barber. The crowd began to cheer. Amanda frowned. I'm sure the rabbits are under a spell, she said to herself. I wish I could figure it out and save them. Next day, Amanda heard music. Dee -doop, dee -doop. The Pied Piper danced down the street playing on a small pipe. He kept looking over his shoulder, but the road behind was empty. Are you piping away the rabbits? Amanda asked. I am, answered the Piper. I'm working, so go away. Are the rabbits going to follow you? Amanda asked. As a matter of fact, answered the piper, that was the tune I used for rats. Works like a charm on them, but rabbits are more complicated. He flexed his fingers. I was just warming up. Dee doot, dee doot, he played. The rabbits didn't even look up. The piper frowned. Just how many rabbits are there? He asked. Every day there are more, answered Amanda. On the first day, I had only one pair, not in fib. They're babies. 
Amanda drew two baby rabbits and wrote a B for babies in the dirt. The second day they were adults. She drew a line and drew two bigger rabbits. She wrote A for adults. The third day they had a pair of babies. So there were a pair of adults and a pair of babies. She drew a fourth line from the A and wrote A and B. And the fourth day, those babies were adults and Nott and Fib had another pair of babies. Each pair of adults has a new pair of babies every day. And the babies grow up and have their own pair of babies in two days. She drew in all the pairs for the first seven days. So, how many rabbits does that make? asked the piper. Let's see, said Amanda. She added the pairs for each day. We had 13 pairs for 26 rabbits after the first week. But the rabbits have been here for longer than a week, the piper said. Any fool can see that there are more than 26 rabbits in this town. Well, maybe there's a pattern that can help, said Amanda. Hmm, the numbers are not doubling. Dee doo dee doo, the piper played. And it doesn't repeat like the notes of your song, Amanda said. Maybe it's an adding pattern, she said. Do I add the same number every time? One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. But three plus one is not five, so that doesn't work. The piper sneered down at Amanda. You can play in the dirt all day long, but I have an important job to do. These rabbits will follow me. He started down the road playing a tune. Amanda began to see how the numbers did add up. She called, look, there is a pattern. Amanda's words were the only thing to follow the piper. Not even a rabbit whisker stirred to his tune. The next day there were more rabbits than ever. The Pied Piper gave the townspeople some excuse about deaf rabbits. The mayor frantically called another town meeting. What shall we do about these zilch? Horrid hairs, he bellowed. People scratched their heads, tugged their ears, and rubbed their chins, but they didn't open their mouths. Then Amanda broke the silence and said in a small, clear voice, Sir, I think I can help. The people turned to stare at her. The mayor sniffed. What's your idea, little girl? Amanda stood up as tall as she could. Come with me, she said. I think I know what we need to do. The people of Chi looked at each other and shrugged. What did they have to lose? The townsfolk followed Amanda. She led the way up the hill. The path was steep and winding. When Amanda reached the wizard's house, she knocked politely on the door. The wizard opened it slowly. His eyes burned like hot coals. What do you want, he snarled. Amanda bowed. Please, sir, we have a problem with an increasing number of rabbits. Soon they will have eaten all the food we're growing. You'll starve unless you help us.
The wizard looked at her for a long time. Amanda tried not to look away. He growled in a softer voice. What do you know about the number of rabbits? Amanda told him about how Knot and Fib were babies one day and grown the next, and how they had babies the day after that. She explained how she counted the pairs. One, one, two, three, five, eight, and 13 pairs for the first week. So you see, it's a pattern, she finished. Every day, the number of pairs is the sum of the two days before. As soon as she said this, a strange sound rumbled across the mountain. It was so loud that pebbles tumbled down the mountainside. People closed their eyes tight and covered their ears. Finally, the noise stopped. It was very, very quiet. Amanda opened her eyes. The wizard stood before her, smiling. You've discovered the pattern of the spell, he said. Patterns are powerful. When you figured out the rule for a pattern, you gain power over it. He held out a little wooden instrument. Now take this flute and save your town. What should I play, asked Amanda. Play the pattern you discovered, the wizard said. Then he turned and looked sternly at the Pied Piper, who dropped to his knees in terror. Piper, your greedy lie caused the entire town to suffer. I hope you've learned a lesson. Fib not, lest you raise a wizard's wrath. The Piper trembled as he nodded his head. Amanda raised the flute to her lips. She played the pattern she'd discovered. The notes blended together and made a little song. One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight. Each number is the sum of the two before. It's great. Buzzing with excitement, the crowd followed Amanda as she led the way down the mountain. All the rabbits in the village heard the music. They perked up their ears and twitched their noses. Their feet started thumping. They all came hopping and leaping and dancing after Amanda, following her down the streets, over the bridge, and out of town. Soon there was not a fluffy tail or furry ear to be seen. The people looked around in amazement, then began cheering. Amanda led the parade of rabbits through the woods into a meadow far, far away. The grass was thick and green and there were enough dandelions for everyone. When Amanda put down the flute, two rabbits came and cuddled next to her. Fib, not, she called out joyfully. <laughs> then she laughed, Fib, not. Well, I guess I agree with the wizard on that. Fib and not smiled wisely. The story of Amanda and the rabbits was told in every town for years after. Some people called it the tale of Fib and Not and Sheep, but this was eventually shortened to the tale of Fibonacci. The pattern of numbers became known as the Fibonacci sequence. As for the Pied Piper, neither hide nor hair of him was ever seen again.